here. Now, what I have is this triangle, this triangle, and this rectangle. When I add the area of all the three, that is what gives me half times height. This, this is the height multiplied by eight plus three. I'm not proving that, okay? Because this is this is this is very easy to prove, okay? I'm not doing that. I will not waste your time there. But what what I was trying to emphasize here was that this is a classic example of a composite shape. Any shape that you talk about, you can you can break that into simpler shapes and find out the area of the composite shape. Let's say if I say this, find out the area of this guy. Right? So if I say find out the area of this guy, this is just gonna have to like make easy shapes out of them. Got it. What connect all the shapes? You just like gotta connect all the corners. Yeah. And that that splits that into <sighs> easy looking shapes. And you anyways know the formula for finding out the area of these triangles. Find out the area of all these individual triangles and add them together. So that's where the concept of Composite shapes come into picture. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright. So now, I'm pretty much done with the basic shapes, finding out the area and perimeter formulas. Now, now tell me where you would want me to go with respect to the the the, the concept where you would want me to get started. So this was the basic part. I mean, this is something that all of us need to know. That these are the, you know, the, the basic shapes, how to find out the area and perimeter, and what is the formula, and how those formulas came into existence, and then we learned about the theorem of congruence. Any particular concept that you would want me to pick up, or you would want me to just go ahead with my flow? Well, we have this like, thing, um, kind of homework I need to do mm -hmm. for like, math. Mm -hmm. If you want, like, I can send you those questions and like you can ex uh, explain them. And and that that is related to? It's related to. Let me check. Um. Oh, it's just congruent triangle proofs. Okay, so that part we have anyways covered. Uh, once you get your hands dirty with it, you should be fine in what I believe. I mean, I would certainly want you to try it with whatever we have done so far. Sure, and, yeah. And if you are getting stuck anywhere, send me those questions. Any particular question where you are getting stuck, I will try solving it and I will send you, you know, a screenshot of that. So again, uh, what I was telling mommy was that all the extra classes that we are doing, that flexibility we have only for this week because next week, this week and my family is going to be back. And then I'll have some commitments on the personal front also. So all the regular classes will happen, but this extra class that we are doing, we will not have that flexibility. So how we can work through that is in the evenings, right? Uh, from between 6 to 7 p.m. I am available on Mondays, Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday basically. Okay, that is when you know, uh, I'll I'll be kind of. Uh, I'll mostly not have anything to deal with. So we will keep finding out ways to connect during those times. That is one. Okay. Second thing is how many classes on Tuesday? Like I'm, class other than this. I'm sorry? Like can you tell me when when are my classes? Like example, you're taking geometry class on Monday, what will be my schedule? So so basically see we will not have any pre scheduled classes. What I'm I'm telling you my availability actually. Okay. So so on Monday and Wednesday, between 6 and 7 p.m., that is what, where I'm anticipating I will not have anything. No, Wednesday I will have class. I can talk to my mother about this, like when you're available and all that. Okay, so yeah, so or, or I, will, I will, let's say, Tuesday and Thursday, okay, these two days from 7 to 8. During that time, I'm not home. I'm actually taking my daughter for, you know, for, for Taekwondo classes. So during that time, I'll be outside, but we can get to a, you know, hop onto a, 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 a Google Meet and then we can talk. So if there's, there's something that you would want me to explain, I can explain and I will, I will make you do, the, do the, you know, the scratch work and ask me questions. So I will not have access to the screen where I can write or you know, 
type anything, but you know, uh, we can use that window if that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, see, I mean, on Tuesday and Thursday when I'm out for you know, my my daughter's taekwondo class, we we can connect on Google Meet because I'm doing nothing. I'm actually waiting outside. Okay. So we can hop onto a Google Meet, and then you will tell me what is the concept. Uh, where you would need help or or I can teach you something and if you are getting stuck anywhere I will tell you okay now try doing this okay draw a triangle now okay let's make this angle this much so where you will do a lot of writing stuff I will be mostly dictating because I will not have access to a screen where I can type things okay yeah will that be okay or maybe you can like send me assignments and then I can do them yeah so Right, I can send you assignments, you can send me some of the topics where you are getting stuck. I will explain something, I will record an audio and send it to you. You listen to it and then you try doing some homework. And then, you know, if you have questions, come back to me, right? So, yeah, yes. so see, see uh, this is how I taught my elder daughter, right? I mean, you are like my own child, right? So, that, that's what I am offering you as well. That even if you don't have a pre-scheduled class, we will find out ways to interact. Wherever you have questions, any particular concept, okay, I want to learn this one. I'm probably struggling a little bit. And I will I will solve few problems. I will record an audio, send it to you. Then you will you know, go through it. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays when I'm outside, uh, during that window, right, 7 to 8, 10, this is the window when I'm, I'm literally doing nothing, sitting outside without having access to a screen. And we can get into a call say, okay, fine. What did you do? Okay, tell me what would be your approach and then I'll make you do things on your side and then we'll figure out if that is working or not. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright. So, so theorem of congruence is where you have some assignments to do, some homework you are doing. If you are getting stuck anywhere, let me know. I will certainly try my best to, uh, to help you with some examples. I will solve it in a piece of paper, send you a screen print. So, so you can send me the question, I can solve it and send it to you. Like I write stories, right, step by step, and that should that should be able to clarify things for you. Okay. Now yeah. let's move on from basics. See, we talked about all the different basic shapes. We talked about area perimeter. Now what? Next comes when fourth dimension becomes third dimension. So you are looking at this phone. As a rectangle right now. Now it is no more rectangle. It became a three-dimensional shape, meaning it has length, width, and height also. Yeah? Yeah. This is where we come talking about solid shapes. Yeah. And this is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. Now you see it has height also. This is a rectangle. Now this is a, this is called cuboid. Now let me try to confuse you further. So when you look at a rectangle, this is a rectangle. No problem so far. I'm adding height to it. Yeah, this looks like a matchbox or a phone or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So what is happening here is, I have a classic example. This was my rectangle, in my notebook. What I have, I have rectangle after rectangle after rectangle after rectangle stacked one after another. That is how it is adding height to it. Okay. If I had more pages, that would have been higher, thicker, whatever you call it, yeah? If I keep on stacking more A4 sheets on the top of it, that would have made the notebook thicker and more, uh, I don't want to jump to the word volume, that's why I'm trying to find out how to a way to explain that. So I had a lot of A4 sheets, okay, which I kept on stacking one after another. And that is what made the this look like a notebook. Otherwise, it was just a page. Yeah, A4 sheet. I put so many rectangles one after another. 
which are of same shape, same size, same dimensions. And that is how I made this notebook. From a page, it became a notebook. If I keep on adding more pages, it will become thicker. It will become taller on this side. Yeah? Yeah. So, if you visualize this, whatever we have on the board, this was my rectangle initially. My A4 sheet, whatever it is. We kept on putting more and more layers. More and more layers. That is how it became thick. Yeah? Agree? No. No, sir, it's, it's okay. I mean, if I have to say it again, I will say it. It's fine. I cannot hear you. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, sorry. Can you hear me okay now? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, no, that's okay. So, what I was saying was, I just had a rectangle or a piece of paper, A4 sheet. I kept on stacking one after another. And that is what? That piece of paper converted into a notebook. Correct? Yeah. So, here, also same thing. When you have a rectangle, you kept on stacking similar rectangles, the same rectangle one after another, and that added height to it. Right? So a rectangle converted into something called cuboid. Have you come across this before? Yeah, so this was my rectangle. I added more and more layers to it. That is how it became a cuboid. A three-dimensional shape, meaning it has length, it has width, and it has height also. Okay? So all the solid that we talk about, that is, that has three dimensions. Yeah? Length, width, and height. Or, or you can at least visualize them in three, three dimensions, basically. It will be x and y plane and a z plane. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. So, similarly, you should look at a square. It has length, all the sides same. Now, add height enough to it which is same as the side. Meaning, this also is same as this. The height is also same as the, the other sides that we have here. If the height is also same as this, the sides, this is what is a cube. So, we all, we are all used to the word ice cube. As per the mathematical definition, ice cube is supposed to be a piece of ice which looks like a square from all sides. With the same dimension. From here you see it's a square, from here you see it's a square, from here you see it's a square. Everywhere it's a square. So, as per the mathematical definition, a cube or an ice cube is supposed to be a piece of ice which has all sides being same. And on every side, when you see it, is, it looks like a square, and every side is let's say one centimeter. So that's why people say it's one centimeter cube. Yeah? Yes, sir. So now, there are two shapes. We talked about cuboid, which is originating from rectangle, and a cube that originates from a square. And in both the cases, it had length and width. Here it had all sides as same length. But in both the cases, we have added height to it. 
So that is how it became a three-dimensional shape, meaning it has more than one side. This side, this side, this side, this side. You can see. There are so many sides. Yeah? So, with the three-dimensional objects, there are two things that we, we, we would need to learn. One is called volume and one is called surface area. So, if, if you have to explain me what is your understanding of volume in, in simplest form. If, let's say, you have to teach me like a, like a toddler. If I'm a toddler, if you have to explain me what is a volume, how would you explain that to me? Um, so, this is how I like, remember it myself. Mm -hmm. Example, you take a container, it mm -hmm. could be a venue shape, and then you put water into it. Mm -hmm. So, that capacity is volume. That capacity of water. Right. That, that, that's one good example actually. So that, that is how you have to look at it. Or, or, other way you can say is, volume of any object is the space taken by that object in the surrounding or in the atmosphere. Now, what does it mean? Let's say, if you are talking about this classroom, okay, I I being this fat or this tall or this bulky, I take certain space in the classroom, right? In this classroom, how many people like me can stand? Probably 20, 30, maybe 40, if you keep scooching over, right? Or keep pressing everybody, make sure everybody is very close with, with any, without any gap in between them. So, how I will relate is, I have a volume and this classroom also has certain capacity. So this classroom can only accommodate as much as many people who can fit in the volume of this, uh, in the capacity of this, uh, this classroom. Or it's like, it, it's a classroom which has certain capacity. Let's say, let's say it has, I'm just picking it up, 100 cubic feet. 100 cubic feet. And if my volume is, let's say, 10 cubic feet, then there can be maximum 10 people, right? Sure. So, basically volume, as you, as you define, any object's volume is, you can assume that as a hollow container and see how much water it can fit. That is one volume. One way of defining volume or second way of defining volume is, it's the space taken by that object in the in the you know in, in the atmosphere or in the surrounding whatever you call it. Now why I'm saying so is because if I'm trying to find out the volume of this guy, I might not have the luxury of you know digging or, or kind of making it hollow and then find out the volume. I am just trying to find out how much space it will take. Can I put it on my phone or can I put it on my pen, right? So how much space it needs? Real quick, I'm just going to get water. Sure. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. It's okay. All right. So, so what I was saying was, we, we just talked about what is the understanding of volume, right? 
meaning the amount of substance it can contain or the amount of space it takes. Now, what do we understand by surface area? Um, area on the surface, not like the volume on the surface. On the surface. It's, it's as simple as how much space it takes in the volume and if I have to paint this guy, how much of paint I would need, right? That will be a function of how big the surface is, right? I might need 10 milliliters of paint or I might need 200 milliliters of paint depending on how much is the surface that I have to paint, okay? Right? Yeah, yeah. So now, let's go back to the different types of shapes that we need to learn or be aware of and then we will uh, no, uh, probably not in this class today but uh, in the coming classes we will talk about that first shape is which originates from a rectangle and when you are adding height to it that is called cuboid second shape that originates from a square and when you are adding height to it It's called cube. Third shape that we will talk about will be cylinder. A right cylinder or cylinder, whatever you call it. And then obviously things like cone. And then the next thing that comes is sphere. What, so basically let's look at this, if you talk about, let, let's build some understanding around this one before we jump onto the formula and how things are divided, okay. If you look at a cuboid, in the base, what is the base of your cuboid? Your base is a rectangle and then you are adding height to it. If you look at a square, what is your base? Your base is a square, sorry, if you are looking at a cube, what is your base? Your base is a square and then you are adding height to it. Okay. Similarly, if you look at a right cylinder, what is your base? Your base is a circle and then you are adding height to it. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Similarly, yeah. if you look at a sphere, what you have? You have a semicircle like this, which you are revolving in 360 degrees to make it a square, uh, sphere. Correct? And if you are looking at a cone, you are looking at a triangle and that you are rotating it 360 degrees to make it look like this. Yeah? So if you yeah. keep this understanding in mind, then it will be fairly straightforward. Now, let's look at, before we go to this one, we actually missed one important thing. That is called circle. Yeah? Yeah, circle and sphere. Area and circumference or a perimeter, whatever you call it. Do you know, remember what is the area of a circle with radius r? So I had to just touch upon that. So let's let's look at one shape called cuboid, and that is where we will start. Okay, let's let's look at this. As I said, the the base of a cuboid is a rectangle. So I just had a rectangle before. We added height to it. Let's say this is height. If 
this is my length and this is my width okay and this is the height if i have put less height my volume would have been less if i would have put more height my volume would have been more it, it can you know contain more water or it would need more space if my height keeps on increasing my volume is um, i mean the space that it takes is increasing correct so your base is length times width this is the area and if you add height to it multiply by height that is what becomes your volume so for any shape look at the base multiply that by height that will give you the volume okay this is my area so length times width i have added height to it how many times i have added that that height make the volume yeah yes sir now same way look at a cube you have length and length matching and the other property of cube says the height is also same as so this this height is also same as length now look at this again what is your base your base is a square what is the area of a square area is length times length now you increase the height you multiply that with the height height is again same as length so volume of cube of cube became length cube yeah can you repeat how you are length cube again so so again it goes back to the basic concept of how you visualize this now you cut this cuboid what is the base you have you have rectangle you kept on placing rectangle after rectangle after rectangle after rectangle and you that is how you are adding height so find out the base which is your area and multiply that by height that gives your volume same way here you should look at a cube what is your base your base is a square what is the area of the square length into length Same because that's a property of a cube where all the sides are same. So your length, width, and height all are same. So that's why length times width times height, length times length times width. Yeah. Yes, sir. So now, same way, let's look at the right cylinder also. What do you know? What is the base here? Circle. What is the area of a circle? Pi r square. And this is your height. More the height, more the volume. Bigger the cylinder, more the volume. Pi r square multiplied by height. So you always, for finding out the volume of any shape, you look at the base. If it's a symmetric shape, I mean, I would not use that for for the cone because I cannot take this as a base and multiply by height. It will be different, right? Because this place is empty. I'm only talking about a symmetric shape where from base to the top, it's symmetric. From base to the top, it's symmetric. That's where I'm taking the base, area of the base, multiplying that by height to get the volume. Area of the base, multiplying that by height, that gives me the volume. Base, area of the base, multiplied by height, that gives the hot volume. Okay? Yes, sir. So this is we just talked about the volume of I mean basically I mean we just tried building a basic understanding of the three-dimensional shapes such as cuboid, cube, and right cylinder. And we try finding out the volume, which is as simple as find out the area of the base, multiply that by height. That is the volume. Yeah. Now there is one more thing that we would need to learn, and I I would certainly not want to stress that out in today's class. It will be just too much to digest. But the surface area part, can you see? Visualize this. This side and the opposite side are same. Same. This side. And this side are same two like opposite rectangles. This side and this side are two same opposite rectangles. This side, sorry, this side and this side are same two opposite rectangles. You have rectangle. yeah six sorry three pairs of equal rectangles. Okay. 
here you have six matching uh, squares here you have one circle here one circle here and then the curve so we will try finding out how do you figure out the surface area of these shapes yeah in the next class yeah so that is where you want to stop so a quick recap we talked about so the basic shapes right finding out how the area formula for those shapes are derived then we looked at some of solid shapes where we talked about cuboid, cube and uh, right cylinder and tried finding out the volume of these objects and then surface area is something that we are keeping for the next class. Alright? Okay, sir. That's something brings us to the end of the class.